pure filth. There's a sewer. They live with the rats and the mud and filth and vomit, and they grow out of that, and they came to Washington. So they like vermin? No, they're much worse than vermin. Vermin have some purpose. These have none. We are here in Washington, D.C. because there is a rally for the state of Israel. And we have come, thank God, a lot of rabbis and many, many of the laymen of the Jewish community simply to speak up and let the world know that with the help of the Almighty, because we are Jews, we will never, never be silent. How dare the Zionists steal by name, steal the name Israel, steal the Star of David, and vilify and declare that the Muslims hate the Jews because they have a different religion. That is repugnant, that is not true. They was the Muslims who took us in. How dare they bomb, kill a mass murder in Gaza? How dare they do for 75 years killing the people of Palestine? It is not anti-Semitic to speak against the state. The state of Israel is anti-Semitism personified. They are anti-Semitism. They are the cause of blood, the rivers of blood. Because we stand up and say the state of Israel is criminal rebellion against God. So we urge everybody, stand up. You are not anti-Semitic by opposing the state, only by supporting it. Let us stop, God help, the murder of Gaza, the murder in Palestine, a free Palestine, so as Jews we can embrace and live together in peace as we've had for hundreds of years in China soon in our days. What does Stehenam mean? Hell. Do the Jews believe in hell? Yes. It's a very different than what the Christians view it as. We don't believe it as we don't view it as a place of like punishment. We view hell as a place where you go to uh, where God can help you so you can get to the next place. What it basically is is you feeling the regret of not of you that you could have done better, but it's not like a painful fiery place. I'm not supportive of anything. I'm just saying that there's 75 there's frustration in Gaza. Unless Israel does something to change their policy, there's no guarantee that it's not going to happen again. Okay. Well, you sound a little more understanding of the attack than a lot of the people here. I think a lot of the people here have been expressing kind of horror and, and dismay at the attack. I haven't heard anyone phrase it as frustration. I think this is a byproduct Isn't that of... in their charter? No, it's not. No, I think it is. It's, it's not. literally in their charter. It says that they will kill Jews. Yeah. It's actually not. Exiled leader Khaled Michel presented a document outlining the group's new position from Doha. He said Hamas's fight was not against Judaism, but, quote, aggressor Zionists. We're not fighting Israelis because of their religion. We fight those who occupy our lands. If a Muslim occupied our land, we will fight them. If it was a Christian, we will fight them. The document is crystal clear. It states clearly a declaration of the illegitimacy of the occupation. Our claim to all Palestine, Jerusalem, the right of return, and the resistance. These are clear principles. Twenty twenty two was the deadliest year in Israel and the occupied Palestinian territories in over a decade, and the violence is only increasing. But in October, in the midst of escalating violence, something strange happened. A serving member of the Israeli parliament appeared on the front line of the street conflict, pulled out a gun, and started threatening Palestinian protesters. <laughs> What's even more shocking is that this man wielding a gun has since been named Israel's Minister of National Security, a 
powerful figure in Israel's recently elected government, probably the most ultra-nationalist in the country's history. This is how the far-right ultra-nationalist politics of Jewish supremacists and militant settlers has made the leap from the streets into the halls of power. It's so, literally in their charter, it says that they will kill Jews. Yeah, it's actually not, because I can tell you a person right there who knows the person personally who wrote it. That wrote the Hamas charter? Yes. Who, who knows? I could interview with him right there. He could tell you the person himself who wrote the Hamas charter, and it doesn't say to kill the Jews there. Is he friends with people in Hamas? He was friends with the person who wrote it. We would love to talk to him. Okay, you're invited for over for an interview. Okay, all right, let's go. I did get it. Well, we were living in every Arab and Muslim peace. Since the introduction of Zionism, there's death, there's suffering, there's hate, there's bloodshed, there's rivers of blood. It's an insult to the intelligence of everybody who goes in lockstep with the Zionists and supports them. Can I ask you really quick, because we don't have a ton of time. This Hamas attack on October 7th, where they raped and slaughtered and murdered many, many people. Do you support that attack? You know, I, I get the feeling that you're some Zionist news outlet because the way you're presenting that question, let's not fool ourselves. We're it's not... a selfish movement of Zionism. They are anti-Semitism personified, right? Listen, I just want to ask you. I'm not going to play your game because you're Gordon, trying to play the game of Zionism. No. Zionism is trying to obfuscate, to divert attention from who they are. They're occupying, they're killing, now they're maiming people in Gaza in the name of Judaism. And the more they exacerbate hate of Jews, the more they're happy. Why are they happy? Because then they'll be able to claim, oh, we have to have a state to protect you. Okay. We don't need their state, Sir. we need God. God Sir. said, don't make a state. We I just wanted to know if you condemn that. Attack. I told you, I'm not going to play your Zionist game. We are not I'm going to tell you that we, nobody enjoys and nobody is happy all with right. the death of Jews. We're, We're saying the death of Jews is because of Zionism. And you want to ignore that. A stone's throw from the old city of Jerusalem, Me'asharim, a Jewish quarter like no other. The quarter was established in 1874. It's one of the first five Jewish neighborhoods built outside the walls of the old city. If the different communities that live there today do not constitute a homogenous whole, for the Haredim, or God-fearing in Hebrew, only the Messiah has the right to recreate the Kingdom of Israel. In the meantime, the walls of Me'asharim are covered with very questionable messages. We constantly spread the message that the Zionists are just like the Nazis. Why? What did the Nazis do? They wanted to end Judaism and the Jews, so they killed them one after the other. And Zionists, it's the same thing. They want to end Judaism. They do not kill anyone, but they use spirituality to do it. So, you are not a Zionist? I am not a Zionist at all. Really, I'm not. In the neighborhood, some even go so far as to proudly display their support for the Palestinians. This is particularly in the case of the sectarian organization Natore Karta, the Guardians of the City in Aramaic, an ultra-Orthodox community created in 1935 by the grandfather of Mayor Rabbi Hirsch. We do not recognize the Zionist entity nor its occupation. We think this is unfair and dishonest. The Zionists took over this land by force and in blood. We believe this state must cease to exist one way or another. All those who do not follow the way of Torah eventually disappeared. And this is what will happen to the Zionist state soon. For more than 50 years, the Natura Karta have demonstrated alongside Arabs in Palestinian territories. Last January, Mayor Hirsch sent three of his disciples to Jenin to support former prisoners accused of terrorism by Israel. We are taking an integral part in this conflict. We want to live in peace. We stand in solidarity with the Palestinians and their pain. That is what we wanted to show. A visit that did not fail to make people react, especially the religious Ben Gvir, new national security minister. I congratulate the Israeli police after the arrest of a terrorist supporter who visited terrorists in Jenin. We will not allow any support for terrorism in any form, regardless of who it is. But after a few days of detention, all were released by the Israeli police. Like their rabbi, a close friend of the former president of the Palestinian Authority, Yasser Arafat, the faithful of the Natura Karta have chosen their side. We are traitors to the Zionists. We really are. We do not hide what we think and our view of things. 
There are 70,000 families who find themselves in our ideology and in our way of doing things, and who are therefore anti-Zionists, and who in no way benefit from state budgets, who are obviously not used in the army either, and who have no connection or contact with the Zionist entity. Now the fellow who I met here, he said, I want to introduce you to the fellow who helped write the Hamas constitution. Do you know who he's talking about? I don't know. I know that I knew many of the people. Um, there was in, in, here in Washington, D.C., there was a quarterly by um, uh, a fellow, um, I'm, I'm forgetting his name now because it's many years ago, who, who became one of the members of the Hamas go government. And um, he was a very, uh, a, a very big intellectual. He had a quarterly. Maybe I don't remember the exact name. And I, he once called me to speak to write an article for them. And then afterwards, became very well acquainted. Then later, he joined um, um, the Hamas. After I think after the tw Twin Towers, because he felt such pressure, he went and he became part of the leader in government. Because they had a lot of professors, they had a lot of people, who were very intelligent. The leadership of Hamas, as President Abbas embraced us and said we're nothing we have nothing against jews we're brothers and every place this was also in gaza and this was the same thing in lebanon it's no difference what part of the muslim world shiat sunni everybody says we have nothing against jews it's a, it's an ugly zionist narrative that this clears that there's a anti-semitism and a hate against jews and that gives them the right to bomb and murder the people of gaza it's the movement is obviously, you know, the visiting of Ahmadinejad. I'm not saying that is this sect, but I know that is in the Nuturi Karta, there were some individuals who did go for a photo op to Iran to visit Ahmadinejad. What was their message? Their message, I believe, was against the state of Israel, and it just, it, it seemed as if it was for the proliferation of Iran getting a nuclear weapon, which is surprising, because that's not a peaceful way of going about addressing the conflict. That's saying we want Iran to get a nuclear bomb. Okay. Okay. The difference between Judaism, the spirituality, the religion, the servitude, uh, and subservience to God, and the uh, antithetical concept of Zionism, which is uh, a materialism, godless in its essence, and uh, a goal just for nationalism, and which is something forbidden clearly and distinctly by the Torah. Zionism started a hundred years ago, and from its inception, from its beginning, all the rabbinical authorities were in opposition, only by, because of the Holocaust, the death of so many leaders, that the Jews unfortunately fell prey to Zionism. It's simply because of the weakness of what they've seen, of their lost relatives and things like that have made them fall prey to this onslaught of propaganda. But we all pray for the speedy and um, peaceful dismantlement of the state so we can again live in peace as we have for hundreds of years without any more suffering or bloodshed for any of God's creation. Um, as in Iran, we have this the beautiful Jewish community that's been living there for thousands of years. God bless President Ahmed bin Benjamin. We're joined by Dr. Tamar Elam Gindin. She's an Iran expert at the Esri Center in Taifa University. Thank you very much for joining us today. Yeah. Jews in Iran have a complete freedom of religion. They have complete freedom to practice Judaism. They're allowed to drink wine for Kiddush. And How they, many Jews much currently better. live in Iran? Uh, well, the estimate of the number of Jews in Iran is somewhere between 9,000 and 25,000. It depends who you ask. I still believe, I still believe we're putting ourselves in danger. People disagree with that. They're, they're, they're entitled to their opinion. I just say here in America, we, we have to be concerned that there are thousands and thousands of Arabs out there that are screaming, globalizing the Fatah, and there has to be a response to that. Although we went through the Inquisition, and the Crusades, and throughout history. What we did was, we went to Muslim countries who provided for us a safe haven and a home. Yes, these were the people who opened their doors to us. It is forbidden to have a state, and it is forbidden to have the state of Israel, created by stealing the homes and the lives of the Palestinian people.
So don't let the Zionist ploy, which is their plan, they, they have a professional groups that said this is the way. Do not discuss the, the oppression of Palestinians. They, they're selling it to all the universities. Do not speak about oppression of Palestinians because people are sympathetic to the Palestinians. Speak about terrorism, terrorism. We are pleading with you, don't call it a Jewish state. And it is the direct opposite of Judaism. It is a Zionist state forbidden according to Judaism. And constantly say to them, you are the anti-Semites. You are the ones, the root cause of the suffering of the Palestinians and the exacerbation of anti-Semitism. From what I understand, you're waiting, you're waiting for the Messiah. Then they'll be in Israel. No, they won't be in Israel. Oh, what happens? Then there will be the revelation of God. Then there will be the revelation of God where all humanity together will serve God in harmony. There will be a, a metaphysical change in the world. That's what Jews believe and that's why they were able always to uh, live amongst the Muslims because the Muslims who are educated, the Muslims who are scholars, they knew what it says in our Torah and they had no problem with coexisting with Jews who have a distinctly different religion. Why? Because we're not a threat. Because we're not trying to uh, preempt and uh, the, the, the God's uh, decree of, um, of, of redemption. No, they said we, we are living patiently as loyal citizens in every country we reside, praying for the well-being of the country. Zionism comes and they, they try to misconstrue the Torah and say, oh, we're the beginning of God's redemption. How ridiculous, how, how, how uh, uh, repulsive when these people who don't keep the Sabbath, who, who proudly say you don't have to keep any of the laws of the Torah, they are the ones who say that they represent God and they're representing the redemption. Uh, I have a lot of hatred because she's saying let terrorists be free. People who killed my family. If someone killed your family and you, someone said let them be free, I think you would also have a lot of hatred. You're right, hate, violence creates a lot of hatred. When you have people around you that die, you have a lot of pain. Do you care about the children and I care more about my family. Okay, this is this is. Doing. Awesome. Really? Yeah, and I actually I, I love the too. idea. Yeah. Yeah, so. I, I love him. See the lone soldier. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Awesome. I'm coming from a very non biased perspective. So, yeah, actually, I'm, I'm heavily involved. I was in Israel about a week and a half ago. I was there for about 30 hours, uh, bringing gear to, to a lot of my very close friends. Some of them are in Gaza right now, some of them are in various other places. Uh, yeah, very actively involved. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Hey, wait one second. So this is a conversation that I, I, just, I saw my brothers here, and I'm like, hey, uh, I'd love to know what the debate is. It seems your brother is anti-Zionist. Sure. How about you? So it's actually it's it's very interesting. I grew up. I think my our parents are well, especially our mom is very Zionist. Um, I'm not. I won't call myself traditional Zionist. Um, I'm more about the people. You know. um, and my people are there. My brothers are there. My family is there. Wow, uh, that's amazing. Wow. It's important. See, this we is real Jewish our, love. Our, yeah, that's amazing. Protect no, our, amazing. our family. Yeah. Look, I'll show you. This is this is actually really the solid. I'm gonna show you guys quickly. This this is our siblings, right? This is us, right? We're all, we we're very different. We're all like very different denominations of Jews. Uh, we have Hasidic. We have everyone in the middle. Uh, we have me. Wow. So. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> very, very interesting. We do and, and we can have a, a lot of intellectual debate. I don't tell my siblings that their way is right or or their way is wrong. I don't say that my way is right or wrong. Like, why would you march with people who say from the river to the sea? Or Finish a phrase. It's from the river to the sea. What's the next thing? And what does it mean for Palestine to be free? It means a total dismantling of every Jew in the land of Israel. I mean, it's literally from the Jordan River to the Mediterranean River. So, freeing the, the Palestinians being free in that land would be. It seems to me as if it's absolutist and it's a, and, and, and there's no room for, for nuance, yes. So, so freedom for the Palestinians is oppression for the Jews? If it's freedom, Or for the, for the Israelis? Correct, but that's not to say that there aren't outlets that they could do other stuff, but um, yeah, for the most part. Freedom to the, free, free, yeah. It's a call for genocide on Jews. From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. What does that mean to you? 
What does that mean to me? It means as a Jew that we as Jews are forbidden to occupy the land of another people. We are in exile. We're forbidden to have one inch of Jewish sovereignty. It means that they will stop being this rebellion against God, the Zionist state of Israel that's causing death, suffering, and that Jews are leaving God in order to have a nationalist home. You're a good Jew if you support JNA. You don't have to keep Sabbath, as the majority of Jews don't over there. This is all, all the Sephardic lands of Iraq, Iran, uh, um, uh, Egypt, where you want. They, they left their homes, Iraq, they left their homes. And, and, and what happened to the communities? We were flourishing in these countries. Zionism is the spiritual killer and the, and, um, and the embodiment of, of, of Satan, of killing spiritually and physically Jews, Muslims together. And violence breeds more hatred, and you're not making your you state more job. secure to violence. Finish. No, he can say whatever he wants. Yeah. No, no, I mean, there's someone else who's speaking. Okay. No, no, he you're can having talk. a conversation, he can right? Talk. Well, how are you? you I don't want to point at him. He's cutting my brother off. My brother's going to talk, but my brother wants to talk. Say, speak, speak your mind. Ah, Davino, ah, Davino, ah, Davino, ha. Yeah. My grandfather is from Jerusalem. My grandfather is from Jerusalem, okay? Okay. He, was, he, he would come home every day. Can you let me speak? My, gran my grandfather would come home, okay? He was the supervisor of the water plant in Jerusalem. Jews, Christians, Muslims would be there. Okay, they play cards. My grandmother would make them dinner. And we do it with okay. Israeli Arabs also. Are you Arab? It is. There's a lot of hatred in that landscape right now, and Jews were always protected in that landscape. Okay, before. A bunch of Jews were just murdered. 242 houses. How's that called protected? Great. I'll tell you what, quote unquote, Palestine used to look like for 500 years. Yeah, fuck this Arab. Go back. Go back. Yo, best Machado on the Brooklyn Bridge! No, look at. Other side, other side. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, right there. Go to Gehenna, go to Gehenna. Go to Gehenna. Who the people here? Well, these people we know are coming here. We're coming here um, to, where, where people was inculcated, properly in the eyes, since the day that when they were little, and they used fear mongering and telling them, oh, the Arabs and the Muslims are their enemy, when the enemy of the Jews is the Zionist state of Israel. The rabbis from day one said, we are not permitted to have a state end of statement, we're not allowed to have a state because we're in exile. And we're certainly not allowed to have a state by killing and murdering and occupying another people. This is against the Jewish law. The ones who made Zionism, these are a bunch of hypocrites. Boo! You're hypocrites! Boo! Shame on you! Care for your family instead! Did you wear 
Nazi swastikas in the 40s. When you heard of this ferocious uh, event that took place on October 7th, and the brutality of it, what went through your mind? What did you feel? What was, your was our emotions? Again, Zionism caused the death of Jewish people again as in the next step, and we knew what's going to be the result, that, that because of because they're, they're total uh, materialistic approach, their evil approach, they're going to say, we're going to say never again, and we're going to bomb to smithereens the Palestinians, and that way they're going to die, more soldiers are going to die, more Jews are going to die, but they're going to say that we killed a thousand to one, and then they're going to be happy, they're going to bring back to life the ones that died, that's going to be the Zionism. We knew that, the day it happened, we knew that will be the result, because this is Zionism, a rebellion against God, a despicable a criminal entity that doesn't care that they're sacrificing on the altar of Zionism Muslims and Jewish life together. Do you support the killing of Jews? I want to sorry ask you about this. When, when, when Israel goes into, is, into Gaza to retaliate, people look at it as like, oh, Ukraine is right now fighting back. Right? They, 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 they attack me, I'm going to fight back. The way the Arabs look at it is a kid right now kill the guy. Okay. okay, so right now in France, you have thousands of Arabs taking the streets and saying gas the Jews. But when you side yourself with an organization that the Arabs right now want to kill, why are you not taking and putting the whole Jewish community in New York at risk that they're saying, well, it's not Jews, it's not Zionists, it's right now Jews that support what they're doing. What's your going to be response when you know, 500,000 people prayed into New York and they say, gas the Jews. What's going to be the response to that? I Listen, I'm in New York City and we see police, I mean, all over. We go to NYU, stationed across our campus, we have a police station at a Hillel. Um, we feel, I mean, protected. Obviously, there's dangerous people who are yelling things, but I believe that law enforcement has taken the correct steps to prevent. There haven't been any mass shootings here towards Jews. I mean, Canada, yes. Other places, yes. But America, no but I think it's a very emotional time and I think that if you know a certain hopefully there could be peaceful conversation like this but um you know but Let's go other side of the yellow tape other side of that yellow tape right over there you piece of shit you fucking Arab scumbag you fucking Arab scumbag you're scared of a hundred and thirty-five. 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 You're scared